joining us today. Before we begin today's program, I would like to acknowledge a few special guests who are here with us. State legislature led by Assembly Speaker Carl Hasty. <laughs> Chairman of Somos Assemblyman Marcos Crespo. <laughs> Secretary of State Javier Gonzalez. <laughs> City Council Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito. Public Advocate, Leticia James. <laughs> Dennis Rivera, Puerto Rico, Medicaid. <laughs> George Gresham, 1199, President. <laughs> Ray Pochini, LUNA Vice President and Eastern Regional Manager. Mr. Jose Tony Valentin, former New York Mets. <laughs> and Dr. Lislie Reyes, a president of Carlos Beltran Baseball Academy. <laughs> and of course, a warm, welcome, a warm welcome to both Governor Alejandro Garcia Padilla. and Governor Andrew Cuomo. <laughs> As mentioned, my name is Betty Enriquez, and I have the honor of being the first director of the New York State Office of Trade and Tourism. I am both honored and excited for this opportunity. I look to work with many of you in the days and weeks to come. This is all part of Governor, of Governor Cuomo's proactive vision to grow the economic and cultural relationship between New York and Puerto Rico. Buenos días. Soy Betty Enriquez y agradezco que estén con nosotros hoy. Una cálida bienvenida al gobernador Alejandro García Padilla y el gobernador Andrew Cuomo. Como mencioné, mi nombre es Betty Enriquez y tengo el privilegio de ser la primera directora de la Oficina de Nueva York de Comercio y Turismo. Eso es parte, gracias. Esto es parte de la visión que tuvo el gobernador Cuomo de desarrollar el enlace económico y cultural entre Nueva York y Puerto Rico. Now it is my pleasure to introduce the man who has made all of this possible. Please join me in welcoming the governor of the great state of New York, Andrew Cuomo. Es un placer presentar al hombre que ha hecho todo esto posible. Favor de acompañarme en darle la bienvenida al gobernador del gran estado de Nueva York, Andrew Cuomo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias, and buenos días. I am so excited to be here today. We have so many friends, so much energy in the room today. Everybody's been acknowledged, but Betty Enriquez is the first director of the New York State Office, and we're all very excited, so let's give her a big welcome. <laughs> to Melissa Mark Viverito, who you'll hear from in a, a very short period of time, who's a member of our Solidarity Task Force, we came down a couple of months ago. We did a lot of good work, and this is a continuation of that. And she is a star. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> to my colleague from Albany, the Speaker of the New York State Assembly, who, frankly, I like to be in Puerto Rico with better than I like to be uh, together in Albany, Speaker Carl Hasty. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> and to our host, uh, who has been so good and so cooperative and so helpful on so many levels, especially on this New York State office. Uh, Governor Padilla, it is a pleasure, and we thank you for your hospitality and your honor. <laughs> to all our friends, uh, we are going to walk down the block, and we are going to cut the ribbon on the first New York State office that has been located in Puerto Rico uh, that anybody can ever remember. Uh, the office will be a trade office, and it will also be a tourism office. It will facilitate economic development on both sides, from the New York side, from the Puerto Rico side, small business loans, etc. 
It will coordinate health care activities, which right now we have a lot going on cooperatively in health care. And it will also foster tourism between New York and Puerto Rico, because New Yorkers love to come to Puerto Rico, as everybody in this room knows. Uh, and the more we can do, the better. Uh, the fact that it is the first office is powerful, and I think it is symbolic. It is symbolic of the relationship that we have with Puerto Rico, which has never been stronger. And I am very proud to be the governor of this state as we have developed this strong bond with Puerto Rico, and it could not come at a better time. Uh, this office is going to be a continuation of the many activities we have ongoing. Uh, I've been here several times in the past few years, just a couple of months ago. I'd love to be able to come down every month, Governor. I really, really would. Uh, especially when the legislature is in session, I really, really would. <laughs> but uh, I don't think I can get away with it. Uh, you should also know Assemblyman Marcos Crespo calls me twice a week and asks me if I need anything done in Puerto Rico, he'll go. But that doesn't work, uh, and this will be a continuation of that effort, so we have a constant tie. Uh, we discussed last night at a really uh, powerful dinner that we had uh, that first, for me personally, I have a special connection with Puerto Rico. Uh, when I was HUD secretary, I did a lot of work with Puerto Rico for many, many years uh, on many fronts, fighting poverty, housing, community development work, fighting disasters. And I really developed relationships and a feel for the people of the island. But even putting that aside, just as a New Yorker, there is a cultural affinity with Puerto Rico. Uh, they are part of New York. They're neighbors. Uh, they're friends. I grew up in their homes. They grew up in, in my home. So we are inextricably linked, the Puerto Rican community and the New York community. There is a total simpatico between the communities. And uh, this is a time when that relationship should be strengthened and the bonds of that relationship are necessary. Somebody said to me, uh, why open the office now? A lot of things are going on in Puerto Rico. These are tough financial times. Why are you opening the office now? That is exactly why we are opening the office now, because Puerto Rico is having tough times. And friendship is not being there when things are easy. The test of friendship is being there when things are hard. And right now, things are hard, unfairly hard, and unjustly hard. And I say as a New Yorker, and I say as an American that I do not believe Puerto Rico is being treated fairly by our own federal government. And I'm sad and I'm sorry to say that, but that is true. The financial crisis that Puerto Rico is dealing with is not a Puerto Rico's making. It is a making of the laws that the U.S. government passed and imposed on Puerto Rico. And those laws are unfair, they are unjust, they are unwise. This is not just a financial crisis. This is a crisis that is going to hurt people. You are talking about decimating a health care system. It's not overly dramatic to say that people could die from lack of proper health care because of this situation. And we need the Obama administration, and we need the Congress to pay attention and to act and to act now, and we're going to make sure we fight for that. We are going to start, uh, we decided last night, we're going to start with a summit uh, in New York State. Governor Padilla will, will come up. I will be there. Our friends and brothers and sisters in 1199, Dennis Rivera and George Gresham, will host the summit. We'll bring all New Yorkers together, devise a plan and a strategy to launch a national campaign to make sure fairness is brought to Puerto Rico by the U.S. Congress and the U.S. government. And I am proud and pleased to be at the head of that effort, Governor. I want you to know that. Uh, and as I said, friends are there when times are tough. And we have your back, Governor. And we have the back of every Puerto Rican because 
you're part of the New York family, and we are part of the Puerto Rico family. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce Puerto Rico's governor, who I am a great fan of. You know, you tell about an elected official, you tell about a politician, about how they handle the tough issues, not how they handle the easy issues. Uh, and these are tough issues that Puerto Rico is facing. And these are tough issues that were confronted by this governor, honestly, fully, and fairly, and he has my respect and the respect of every person in this room for the way he has stepped up to the plate for Puerto Rico. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Padilla. Thank you, Governor, and thank all, all of you for being here. Gracias, gracias por estar. Eh, 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 Carl, Melissa, eh, Betty, qué bueno que eres tú. Eh, ella fue mi jefa. Eh, algo así. Eh, uh, I, I really appreciate your effort, uh, Governor, and, and all of you for being here with us. Um, as uh, the Governor says, uh, friends are there when things are hard, and, and you are here, and you guys are, are, are here with Puerto Rico, so you are showing uh, friendship between uh, uh, New York and Puerto Rico at, a, at every level. So. Thank you uh, for uh, holding our back to be for being our corner. Uh, we will never forget that. As the governor pointed out, Puerto Rico has been treated unfairly by the federal government. Just to give you one example, healthcare issue, we pay the same as any United States citizen in the 50 states, but we receive less. So it's not an issue that we are asking for parity when we, when we are not able to meet that parity. The issue is that we are asking for parity because it's, it's fair, because we are paying the same. <laughs> it's as simple as that. And that can contribute a lot to take Puerto Rico out of the crisis where we are right now. When we are asking for a, a, a legal structure that allowed us, as in any state, to deal with our uh, fiscal problems in the court of law, is because what we are asking is what any US citizen have in the United States. But let me go further. In Puerto Rico, anyone can file for, bank for bank bankruptcy. Any American company can go a few blocks from here and file for bankruptcy on Chapter 9, but not a public corporation. But not a public corporation. So in Puerto Rico, let's say it, Donald Trump can file for bankruptcy, but the power authority cannot file, uh, file for bankruptcy. And that's just unfair. And receiving bad news from Puerto Rico, and let me tell you about it. Receiving bad news from Puerto Rico move the governor to meet with me, to visit us several times, as you know, and to see how we can strengthen our bonds, Puerto Rico and New York bonds. It's not only of being uh, a, a represent, or the, Governor Cuomo represents, is the, the, the politician that represents more Puerto Ricans out of Puerto Rico. It's not about the millions of Puerto Ricans that live in New York. It's about, it's about all Puerto Ricans. And he answered that call. And as you know, he was here a couple of months ago and we talk about how we strengthen our, our relation, our uh, uh, Puerto Rico and New York relation. And the idea of uh, this office came out. And I don't know, maybe people thought that it was rhetoric or it was just part of a speech saying that we were talking in that meeting about how we can strengthen our relations, how we can put more closed 
Puerto Ricans and New Yorkers, and Puerto Ricans that live in New York and New Yorkers that live in Puerto Rico. But now you can see that those words weren't just uh, uh, for a crowd. We were, uh, we were in business, and here we are opening now the first New York office in Puerto Rico history. This is not only about the Yankees and the Mets. <laughs> eh, José, estoy seguro que tendría eh, eh, su muy particular parecer for the Mets. Uh, and Nidia Velázquez, too. So, so you're not alone. You're not alone. Uh, the issue is that at the end of the day, This is not only an office, this is not, you cannot measure this effort from New York, the governor of New York on square feet. You cannot measure these on square feet. This represents a lot more. For Puerto Rico, this represents that we now are fighting and the big guys is, is with us in this fight. New York is with Puerto Rico in this fight. <laughs> and that's go from the big issues to the small issues. This office will attend small business people that want to increase their uh, capacities in New York. And business people from New York that want to come and try in Puerto Rico or enhance their opportunity in Puerto Rico if they already have it. So this goes from the top to the very uh, business person in the island or in New York. And that's what it's all about. It's about people. It's about people when we are talking about healthcare. It's about people when we are talking about Medicare or Medicaid. It's about people when we are talking about a legal framework to address our issues is about people when we are talking about this office that New York is opening here in Old San Juan. It's all about people. And I, I need to, uh, even though I have to say, I watch CNN during the morning, uh, and there's a, another Cuomo there. <laughs> they like very much each other. <laughs> and local news too, of course. But I need to say this. There's a, there's a lot of good things happening here, too. Yes, we are dealing with a huge crisis, fiscal crisis. I inherited that. I, I didn't create it, but I need to solve it. That's my job, and I like my job. But we are breaking the record in tourism. We are having more to, uh, tourism cruise ships than never in our history. We're increasing our uh, um, visitors in the international airport. More airlines, more destinies, more routes, more frequency, uh, frequency in, the, in, in, in the flights. More hotels are opening. We are about to get to 1,000 additional hotel rooms in the last three years. Crime rate, we cut it to the half in two years and a half. There's no other jurisdiction in the hemisphere during the last three years that have been able to cut to the half the crime rate. But I know you're receiving a lot of bad news about Puerto Rico, but be careful. It works, it works the same way. It's, uh, the doors uh, open for both sides. Uh, if you turn on uh, uh, any... Uh, Network CNN or ABC or NBC or Fox, you will be mainly hearing about Donald Trump. Bad news. <laughs> so if you if you if you receive uh, in your mobile phone any uh, report about Puerto Rico fiscal crisis. Could be just after or before 
uh, one, uh, a one from Donald Trump. I don't know which one I will, rep will, will prefer. <laughs> I want to welcome Tito Trinidad. Tito, gracias por estar aquí. Gracias, Tito. From Coupe Alto, Puerto Rico. So, Governor, uh, and the whole delegation that you bring with you, uh, uh, Speaker, uh, Melissa, all of you, thank you uh, for your support. Uh, uh, as Gover the Governor pointed out uh, last night, uh, when something happened to a family member, the whole family family get in that issue and try to solve it and to support. And uh, sometimes you make friends when you don't need it. Uh, in this moment, governor, uh, any governor can look to the other side and say, you know what, they are dealing with their own issues. Let them solve it. But Andrew Cuomo, people from New York, from the city, from every corner of the state, look to Puerto Rico and say, you know what? We will not let you alone this time. We will be there at your corner. We will be holding your back. Uh, and maybe you have been as any other in type of need. And you always remember who, needs you, who helps you when you need it. Governor, we will never forget that you are here with us now that we need it. Thank all, thanks all of you. Now, now it's my pleasure to introduce you, the Speaker uh, of the House, New York, Carl Hazy. Thank you for being here with us. Buenas tardes a, a todos. Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be back here in Puerto Rico, even if we're with Governor Cuomo. <laughs> it, it's, it's really good to be here celebrating this new chapter for our two communities, but in some way, it, it's kind of sad that we're here just asking the federal government, the greatest country in the world, to just treat Puerto Rico fairly. So it's sad that we even have to do that. But this partnership that we're announcing today will enrich our communities, both here back home and back home in New York because that's what we share. In many ways, Puerto Rico's struggles and opportunities are ours as well. We, share, uh, we have a shared heritage and shared experiences that will help us overcome what hurdles we may have come our way. And this is showing that New York and Puerto Rico is working together. I'm honored to, I was honored to be here earlier with the governor this summer, proud to build a stronger relationship between New York and Puerto Rico. I'm proud that working with Governor Cuomo and Governor Garcia Padilla, this is exactly what we're doing. But for, for all of us, particularly, you know, the Bronx, um, you know, my home county, we have a, a, a strong relationship and many elected officials from, from Puerto Rico. So this really hits us home in the Bronx, what's happening here in, in, in Puerto Rico. And so as, as Governor Padilla, as you said, uh, it's like family members are really struggling. So just to tell you and, and to all of the, the officials here in Puerto Rico that New York is with you and, and particularly the Bronx is with you. Um, and this is a really, really tough time that we are really begging the federal government to really do what's right for American citizens. So with that, So it's good for New York to do its, its part, and, and, and Governor, I, I do want to applaud you for, for taking this stance and, and showing incredible leadership in uh, building a stronger bond between New York and, and Puerto Rico. <laughs> so now it's my, my privilege and, and, and pleasure to introduce my friend, uh, the Speaker of the New York City Council, a proud Puerto Rican, <laughs> Melissa Va Mark Viverito. <laughs> Good afternoon, I'm going to Speaker Hasty. I want to thank Governor Cuomo for his leadership, uh, Governor Garcia Padilla, 
as well. And Marcos, thank you for your leadership in really focusing this conference on this issue of the crisis here in Puerto Rico. You know, I have to say, um, someone being born and raised here on the island, I love coming to my island. But the last several trips and every trip I know in the near future, there's an added level of anxiety um, when you keep hearing about the dire situation and the lack of action. And so, and it's very emotional, personally. Um, so thank you, Governor Cuomo, that on our behalf in New York, you are taking these steps to continue to affirm the commitment and the relationship that Puerto Rico has with, uh, that New York has with Puerto Rico. And let me say the symbolism and powerful symbolism of this office. My mother, who is here with me today. Yeah. And, was born and raised in the Bronx. <laughs> she came to New York and met another New York, a Puerto Rican born and raised in New York. And I was born here. And at the age of 18, I moved to New York. And life has a way of having coming full circle. So she still lives here on the island, so this is very personal. But that just demonstrates, right, that synergy and that revolving door between our communities uh, of how we have uh, that lasting legacy. And so this office is a powerful symbolism. Uh, it's not just about encouraging trade or commerce. It really is about that, those ties and affirming the commitment and the bond that New York has with Puerto Rico, especially in this time that we find ourselves today. And many of us here today, as elected officials, will be joining the rally, Unidos por la Salud. But we're not only Unidos por la Salud, we're Unidos para, por Puerto Rico. And that's important to know. Um, and last night when we had the dinner, one of the things, and I really don't want us to lose perspective of the human aspect of this crisis, when the Governor Garcia Padilla said that his decision coming up is about whether he's gonna pay the creditors or whether he's gonna pay nurses. Whether he's gonna pay creditors or he's gonna pay police department, right? And the police officers to patrol and keep our communities safe. That's very real. That's very real. Imagine us having to make those decisions and we have in the past of New York, but that is not our present. And that should never be anyone's present or anyone's future. And so I want to thank the governor for his leadership, but this is a very difficult time. So this office is really, um, uh, uh, really important, and I'm, I'm thankful for it. Um, le quiero dar las gracias al gobernador Cuomo, que de parte de todos New Yorkers, 